Okay, so I've gotten a number of questions about audio um, as it relates to these PTZ cameras. Um, and this is gonna go for pretty much all, almost all the PTZ cameras out there, PTZ Optics, Smart AV, or in this case, uh, my Honey Optics 4K. By the way, there is actually a coupon code that Honey Optics has given me um, for all of you who might be interested in one of those cameras. Uh, it's in uh, the description of this video, so feel free to check that off for like $125 off, I think. So that's a good deal. Um, but no matter what the camera is, uh, you may have noticed something uh, uh, missing from this style of camera, and that is they don't have microphones. Unlike some of maybe the consumer level camcorders that you're used to, um, or even my higher end uh, Canon XC10 I shoot these videos with, they all have built-in microphones, which is sort of a default audio source if you know you don't have any other options. Now, I say that because you really shouldn't use <laughs> the built-in microphones on any of these, on this guy um, or even my fancier camera there, because frankly, they're not very good. Uh, if you look around YouTube, for people who do this for a while, they'll almost always be wearing um, some kind of a uh, mic like this, a lavalier mic, or they'll be using um, a microphone like this, um, which is a what we call a shotgun style microphone and a directional uh, microphone um, that actually uh, intentionally listens to what you point it at. Um, those are kind of the two biggest styles um, of microphones uh, out there for scenarios um, like this one. And that's for a good reason. The microphones in the cameras are frankly not very good. Um, so most makers of these style of PGC cameras uh, are gonna go ahead and just skip that one because you're not going to use it anyway. Um, two, this is going to be probably pretty far um, from you. I mean, in, in our sanctuary, this thing is 75 feet away. If you're in a classroom, um, a boardroom, meeting room, whatever, the chance that this micro, uh, microphone built in this camera being able to pick anything up is probably relatively slim anyway. So most of them just skip it. But that doesn't mean you don't have an option. If you have video, you are going to want audio and you are going to need to put those audio and video back together again um, somewhere. Now, if you're using a, like a hardware switcher, like an ATM Mini, Sling Studio, something like that, you're gonna take your video input from this and your audio input from somewhere else um, and away you go um, and you'll put it together there or if you're using OBS Studio or something more complex. But say you just want something simple. Say you want to take advantage of, like, say, the USB out on this that turns this camera basically into a really fancy USB webcam uh, for your computer. That would be a great use for, like, a classroom um, or some, a smaller space where, or a smaller worship space or a smaller meeting space or whatever. Um, it may be useful to just turn this into a webcam that you can use in Zoom um, or any of the other, you know, Facebook Live, YouTube Live you know, whatever those platforms are. Um, but what that's gonna mean, the easiest thing to do then, um, so you don't have to select a separate audio source and video source, um, you know, say in Zoom for that for or whatever platform you're using, the easiest thing then is to actually get the audio into the camera so that when the feed leaves the camera, either over the USB or the HDMI, it has both the audio and the video in it. Video is obviously gonna come to the camera, but where then does the audio come from? Well, in this case, um, uh, almost all of these style of cameras will have an audio in port. Um, in, in most cases, it's gonna be something that looks like this, and it's gonna look a lot like a standard um, headphone, you know, uh, you know 3.5 millimeter, eighth inch um, headphone port they're used to seeing on computers and phones and tablets. Um, and also in some cases, it'll even have an audio out. So you can actually run the audio into the camera and then back out to something else if you desire. So what's the easiest way to get audio into that audio in port? Well, while that audio in port is gonna look a lot like the audio in port that you may see um, on your camcorder um, or other places, it actually has a couple of differences. One is nearly all these cameras are set up to receive a line level input. Now there's two really kind of different um, standards, if you will, um, or volumes really, if you will, um, that audio can come through at. There's line level, or and then there's mic level. What comes out of the microphone um, itself 
is mic level output. So in the case of say actually this little one right here. So this is a small shotgun mic from Audio-Technica. Um, this is their AT875R, um, which is a nice little basic shotgun mic. It actually usually comes with a little windscreen protector and then has a standard XLR output. Well, you can get a converter, a cable converter that will convert that XLR output um, into a 3.5 millimeter that will plug into your camera. That's actually a pretty, um, and you might think, oh, that will work. And if you try that, what you're gonna find is it probably isn't. And it's not gonna work for a couple of different reasons. There are two challenges to making a mic like this work straight into your PTZ camera. One is most condenser mics, this is a condenser style mic. Uh, most mics like this um, that are higher quality, you know, and the reason you want the condenser is it's a higher quality mic, you get better performance out of it, um, actually require you to send a little bit of voltage to the mic for it to work. It is not completely passive. There are mics that don't need um, any kind of electrical input. They can just work all on their own. Um, uh, but condenser style and most often these shotgun style mics require a little voltage to be put into them. Well, that's a problem because these cameras and really no um, you know, camcorders or otherwise are set up to send what, what is known as phantom power to a microphone like this. So you have to first solve that problem. One way you can solve it is by using a mic that provides its own power. So this is actually a brand I really like, Audio Technica, Audio Tech, Audio, Audio, Audio Technica stuff. It's not bad, it actually works fairly well. Um, I'm actually a big fan of the Rode brand. They sell all kinds of product. I'm using a, a Rode Smart Lab um, connected uh, to their one of their small wireless systems right now. Um, and this is our go-to shotgun mic. This is their NT G4 Plus. Um, it's got a really nice uh, microphone element on it. And the other thing it has is it has a rechargeable battery built in. There's actually a USB charger um, in the base, uh, in, embedded in there with the XLR um, connectors, and it will actually power itself and provide its own phantom power um, on a rechargeable basis. So, this mic does provide its own phantom power, so it solves that problem for you. So you can take, um, you know, get a cable that converts XLR um, into one eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter, same thing, um, and, and plug that in to your DSLR or your camcorder or whatever, or anything that accepts mic level input, because this is a mic, and the microphone is going to put out mic level input, all right? So that actually works fairly straightforward and solves one of your problems. The challenge that we have is the PTZ camera almost exclusively is expecting line level input. Um, and line level input has basically, is at a, you think of it kind of in a very basic terms is at a higher volume, um, which means that the signal it's putting out is stronger than just the normal mic level input. Mic level input is actually fairly weak. The signal you actually get out of the microphones is fairly weak. Um, so they have to go through something that is called a preamp, um, but you know, pre before, um, pre amplifier um, before it can be used um, by uh, different pieces of audio equipment or by cameras like this that are expecting a line level input. Which brings me to these other little boxes I have sitting right here, which um, is are a couple different ways to solve one or both of the problems with using these style mics. So let's take a look at those, shall we? Um, first is this box. This is kind of a company called Rolls. Um, this is super straightforward. I think you can get this for less than a hundred bucks. Um, and this basically is a mic preamp and that's it. That's all it does. Um, and that's frankly all we needed to do. And that's fine. Um, and so it's a very simple and basic solution. And so what you get is you get one input um, on it, which is an XLR style, the three pin XLR style input, which is perfect for taking a microphone in. And then you get um, a, an output. Um, in this case, it's also another XLR style, um, or you know, they also have an, a quarter inch style. So that means you can get a cable that converts this XLR style to an eighth inch, um, and away you go. So I'm gonna show you this setup, I'll set up in a minute. What's important to know is that this takes the, X, this takes the mic level input, 
combines it, because it, it has to be plugged in itself separately, um, combines it with um, that additional electricity and the energy that's needed to then produce a line level output um, to go to anything that is expecting line level output. Um, it also has the addition of providing what's known as phantom power. Other places you're actually going to see this also listed as plus 48 volts. We'll see that on the next box. Um, but in this case, it's known as phantom power. That is the exact same thing. Don't worry about it. Um, so this provides phantom power. Um, and there's a little switch here for turning your phantom power on and off. Now, you won't typically do harm sending phantom power to a mic that doesn't actually require it. Um, but it's best to avoid it if you can. Uh, so this solves both of our problems. It takes a mic level input turns it into a line level output, um, provides the phantom power for our shotgun style mic. Um, and in this case gets us also this additional gain control, um, which you can kind of think of as sort of like as a volume control. Um, so after you have all this set up, if you're still not getting as much performance out of the microphone as you want, you can come in here and you can actually tweak and turn up the gain, which you're basically turning up is how sensitive the mic is, um, and, and get yourself a little bit more, um, again, performance out of your mic if you need to so it's nice to have that separate control. Simple box, easy to use, um, doesn't require uh, much of anything um, to, to be set up and run. Um, and again, that one button, that one knob, and that's it. So if you especially have like a simple classroom setup, this is a great way to go. Um, XLR cables can run incredibly long distances if you want them to. Um, so you can have this sitting back by um, your camera, um, just sitting next to where it is and run a long XLR mic to wherever it is you want the mic from. However you want to do it is fine. Um, this is a great little simple basic, less than $100 solution. If you want something a little more compre a little a little more comprehensive, or just a couple more options, um, Behringer sells a product too. Behringer makes really great affordable audio equipment, um, and this is actually going to do um, a, the same couple of things for you. Um, one is it's got the mic line in, so there's your mic in for your shotgun style mic or whatever you want. Um, it actually has a second input if you want to use that. Um, this is actually designed uh, to be the interface for somebody who maybe has like a vocal mic and then an instrument. Um, connector like a guitar or something like that um, you can use it for that so if you're live streaming a very basic musical performance or something like that or you've got a couple of different inputs you want to bring in you've got the option to do that you can adjust the gain again but you can adjust it independently um, on the two different inputs if you would like um, and then the output also has its additional adjustment um, so you get a little more adjustability um, with this one uh, you have these two to balance those two so you're not getting more guitar are than vocal or vice versa. And then this is kind of a total overall volume adjustment that comes out of it. So that works pretty slick. On the back, you've got your plus 48 volts or phantom power, same thing. Uh, you'll want to make sure you turn that on uh, for if you're using the condenser style mic. Um, now, in this case, the output's a little differently. The output is two, you have two choices. You have a USB out. So you could run this as a USB out straight to your computer and it would basically become um, like a sound device on your computer. Um, so you could run it directly that way if you want or you've got RCA style outs. And with RCA style outs, you would take a cable kind of like this. So you've got you know RCA style outs um, on that end, kind of plugs in there. Uh, and then you've got on the other end, your eighth quarter inch at out, which would plug right into my line in there. Um, and that's a pretty standard um, and simple way to do it. Uh, that just sort of works well. Uh, these cables are probably much more common to find than the XLR to eighth inch cables um, are. Um, and this works well. And again, this is a less than $100 product um, that it, you can just set up you know, right next to your thing. Chances are once you get the audio adjusted, you're never gonna touch it again anyway. All right, let me mock one of these up for you and show you how it works. All right, so here is our basic setup. We have our shotgun style microphone. Um, these work at a pretty good distance. Uh, they can be several feet away from the person or a person's talking. Uh, just remember they're directional, so you need to point them at the person. That's coming down into our Rolls mini mic uh, preamp um, through the input. You can see we've got our phantom power turned on. We've got some green lights happening here. We've got our gain turned up a bit. Um, and then we have our out. We've got an XLR out to a eighth inch input. 
going in to the audio line in on the back of our camera. And if I needed to take that signal somewhere else, um, say to a soundboard or something, I could grab it from the line out um, and then away we go. So now we have audio and video combined within the camera. And then it's our choice whether we wanna use that HDMI out, the SDI out, or that USB out to get both the camera and the video and the audio out of the camera. Pretty slick. All right, so I hope that answers some of your questions about how to do a very basic audio setup. Again, these would be great for um, a classroom or a small meeting room or conference room where you only need the most basic um, of audio setups uh, in order for people on the other side of the camera to hear you. One note, as I was hooking this thing up to test um, on the Behringer box, the Behringer box actually, if you noticed around back, does not have an AC input. Nope, it requires its power come from USB. Um, and again, this will become an audio device, device to your computer. So even if you wanna use um, these auxiliary outputs, which you certainly can um, to talk directly to the camera, you're still gonna need the box itself hooked up to your computer so that it gets power to it. So do keep that in mind. That may make actually the rolls box here a little bit um, of a better choice if you just want for something very basic and simple. Um, I will have links Links to all of this um, down in the description so you can see exactly what I'm looking at. Um, and of course, I'm sure they'll have some other options for you. Uh, look in the future for um, a couple of videos on how to hook it up to a more elaborate system if you're using like a full soundboard setup um, or whatever. Uh, but for classroom use, individual use, streaming while you're um, playing online games, um, any of those kind of setups where you just want a simple solution for audio to go with your video, um, this setup right here, you really can't beat. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, for joining me and until we see you again have a good day hey everybody if you found that video helpful please hit like and subscribe and also check the video description for links to any products you've seen in today's videos doing that really helps support this channel also don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you may have a lot of the content i do is based directly on the questions of the feedback you give so keep that coming and i will keep making them thank you